Hello. Hi. Okay. So today we're gonna review some vods from the Squeeze Wolf server, which is cool. Uh, but first I need to get the, the daily things from the game. So hold up. Okay. Okay. Now we go to Alterna. I love my golden badge. Golden badge or what exactly? What did you get? Golden splash. Sorry. Oh yeah, because you you unlocked it. Mm. That's cool. Did you get the, the super duper lucky lucky duck uh, tag? Name. So this is the one I got. <laughs> okay, we got the things. Mm -hmm. No, can I report this for being hateful? Abusive, harassing, bullying. They're bullying freaking plumblets, whatever. Um, right. That's okay. Interesting. Um, okay. So, lobby. We go and take a look at the VODs. Bim Bing Bongus 69. Sus. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the channel, uh, Mr. Bingus Bongus 69. Okay, so replay codes. Um, let's take a look at the site of uh, the server. Server, server, server. So here's how it works. First off, we remove the studio mode because we don't need that for now. We go into additional window, discord.exe, that's cool. We do, okay. VOD reviews, where is it? F no, feedback on the thing. Mm -hmm. um, okay, that's cool. Now, we go and we display the window. A window, please appear. On the, please, please appear. Come on. Okay, it is here. This is the window. Um, hold up. I'm gonna just find all this. We don't need to see that. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So, there are some VODs on there from people in the server. Um, Spoon3. Popcorn Bunny says, Mind looking at my Luna Blaster replay I put on the server? Of course, no problem. And hello to the. Welcome to the channel. Oh my god, I got the gold harmony. Yes, I got it too, recently. So, um, I think for some of the replays, I, I'll need my phone for the... Because that's how you add some of them. So let me just put out my phone real quick. My phone is right here on the side. Whoop. Stuck in a three. What, does that mean I need to click the link from my phone? Mm-hmm. Which means I need to open the Discord channel, actually. Do -do 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 -do. Uh, Squid Skull is here. Boom. Okay, and then... And then... Oh, I'm lost in the channel. It is... Uh, here. Okay. Because the images are different between my phone and my computer. Um, I now have a uh, all golden splash tag. Nice. Uh, oh yeah, everything golden. Okay, that's very cool. I did a good enough pressure. I did good enough to pressure out the opponent and get our team the dub, but missed a lot of what should have been clean shots. Yeah, I'm gonna take a look at it. So which one is it? Uh, who are you in the server? I'm looking for popcorn bunny. Oh, bunny, I see it. 
Do -do -do. I think I did good enough here to turn on the enemy charger. Would like to get a better at trading two for one if possible. Okay, code. Do -do 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 -do. So first off, I can hide the window. Cause we don't need that anymore. Um. R R E N G one D B D B one H B F H B F B V S one Okay. Wait, hold up. Is there an even smarter way to put it in the app? The card you entered is invalid. Fuck. Oh, wait, hold on. Was it before the update, actually? Popcorn Bunny? Because uh, that might be an issue. Or or maybe I just like input it wrong. I don't know. R R M N G one D B one H B F. Oh yeah, I made a mistake. Sorry. Um. One H B F. My bad, I'm dumb. I'm a dumb dumb. Okay, here we go. Okay. And if I take a look at the replays here. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, we can enter code on the phone too. Cool. Now I can just co copy paste stuff, maybe. Uh, battle replay downloaded. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, is it back? I think it's back. Can you guys see me and hear me and stuff? So, um, so yeah, I was saying, quick disclaimer, I'm not a pro. Quick disclaimer, I'm not a pro at the camera controls in the replay mode either. So it's going to be what it's going to be. Hopefully it's good enough. And uh, like the, the point is not necessarily to get my advice specifically, it's just that people can see the replay and like share advice between themselves, right? Which I'm also going to participate in, but I don't have anything special or my words are not like to take over any others. Uh, so how do you control the camera? Okay, so the team, this is top down, this is objective, mm-hmm. Area two, okay. And when you're in top down, you can zoom and move and rotate, okay. And the auto camera is with this and then switch, special gauge and, okay, I think, I think I'm good. So, let's see what we got. Luna Blaster, okay. How do you... Oh, you can zoom, okay. And so now we can see... Basically have an, an overhead view of what's happening. And how, how people are rolling out. So currently... Okay, the blue team is pushing forward, so you're down on the D-pad, okay. Wait, are you down on... No, that's not the button. Fuck, which one is it? I lost it, fuck. <laughs> Luna Blaster, down on the D-pad. Okay, that's the one. So, enemies on the right. So, you're trying to shut down the charger, you said. Okay. Um, what I think here is that you're getting too close to the enemies. Maybe you need to back off and, and use your range. Because it has like a big area of effect hitbox. And like, if you get so close to him, you're gonna have trouble hitting him. Because it's basically... If you think about it, uh, the closer your opponent is to you, like the small movements they're gonna make are gonna like make them move farther on your screen than if they were farther, right? So that's a that's an issue with like close range uh, weapons, basically. Whereas you know snipers, even if the person is swimming real fast, a, a small movement of the camera is enough basically to cover them. Yeah. Well, basically, you're getting into dangerous situations 
that are hard to get out on, right? You're, you're getting in the little corner here, which is like you don't have escape routes, basically. I think what I would suggest personally, whenever I have a weapon that, that is close range and has flat bombs, usually what I do is I, I tend to shark in the ink and basically try to see who's where on the map. Maybe I can get picks by getting close if, if it's safe enough. Otherwise I just like spam the, sp the splat bombs at range and I can do basically long range kills. Also another thing I noticed is that you tend to aim to the ground. Which my okay, that was a cool a cool kill. Especially when you're when you're using blasters, it's best to aim higher, because then you got you still hit people from the ground, right? With the area of effect, instead of aiming at the ground, and then you've got the small explosion which is less useful. How's the map looking exactly? Okay, it's looking good. Okay. Yeah. Usually, whenever I play the Luna Blaster, I tend to stick to corners way more. Like, basically, when you play a weapon, you want to play to its strengths and do the things that you couldn't do with other weapons. I mean, that that's what playing to your strengths means. But, for example, the Luna Blaster is great at hitting around corners, like, very far behind the corner, because it has such a big radius of explosion. Um, so I guess, yeah, just play around corners. But it's, it's true that on Hammerhead it's kind of hard, because you don't have a lot of space. I guess what, what could be a good thing to do is like in the middle, you've got the three little platforms on like two on either side and one in the middle. And basically that, that could be your playing ground and you could be the safeguard of that zone and prevent enemies from coming if they ever try to pass you, basically. Um, but I guess if you need to push, then yeah, you can push. But I guess since, was that Torfor? Yeah, I guess you can just like hold down the middle and that should be enough. Hello Creature, what's up? Um, Popcorn Bunny wanted to focus on Luna being the fastest shot time to kill for a one hit of blasters. True, okay, yeah, I, I get what you mean. Like, for a blaster that can one shot, it's the fastest one. Is it? Oh, yeah, I think it is. Um, okay, so that is pretty cool. Uh, any other replay? Let's see on the server. Boop. Yo, how many people are in the voice channel here? With camera too, oh my god. And lots of people in general 3 as well. And I'm all alone in general 2, darn. Okay. Um, so. What I, I'm, I'm gonna probably do is start with the ones at the bottom. And then just go upwards from the, like more and more older ones um because that way we can just keep going until we run out of things to do or i want to uh, end it hello the neon wyvern i guess i will be watching this stream tonight hello hello okay so do you have you posted a clip uh wyvern i have been waiting on yes okay uh wyvern wyvern i mean i guess we'll do it in order unless you t Ooh. Okay, so this is you. Can I can I be the smart and do from user Neon? Wait, no, why? At ah, does it even work? I think it broke this past update. Whatever. I hope penguin guy. Uh, I'm reviewing vods from cool people in this cool server, which you should totally join, which I should totally post the link to. Uh, this uh, I think it has the um, vanity URL, right? discord.gg slash squid school that should work does it work let me try oh it works poggers um so yeah and i'm in the voice channel obviously clips do the clips okay come on 
Um, this one. What is it? Can we open it? Um, here. Oop. Open the app. That doesn't help me. Because I need to do it on my phone. Whatever, I'm going to do it on my phone then. Sure. Sorry, it's the first time I'm doing this. And it's, it's struggles. <laughs> okay, Discord. Bam, click the link. Yep. Open link. Oop. Download. Cool. Download Battle Replay can be viewed as a lobby terminal in the Splatoon 3 game. Sure, view replays. You have a Battle Replay marked for download. Download. Boom. Poggers. Okay. So which one is this? It's Onyx. Uh, tower control, splash from I like how he put the, <laughs> the freaking hashtags. Splashomatic tower control. Okay, so we know what to expect. Let's hide it real quick. Boom. And let's play the replay and check out what we can learn from this. Whoa. -woo. Okay, Onyx with the splash. Our team comp has two bubbles, tower control obviously, the flings after tantrum missiles, and uh, and the uh, machine, which is gonna be a pain too. Is it, and it also got booyah bombs, so that's something. Meanwhile, yeah, on your team you got the, um, I mean, you're all dead. Wipeout, okay. That's not a cool, like a very great start, but let's see. Let's take a look at the map. Ooh, okay, you guys are kind of like pushing into the tower and just end up dying. I guess the sniper should probably... Wait, where, where are you? Playing? Oh, okay. The sniper should probably try to be the one to do something in this world here. Like, use its range to stay safe, because the, the enemy team lacks range. Okay, okay, that's cool. I, I guess mainly the big players here would be. What is that? Get, it, get in your bubble! Ah! You should have probably got in the bull form to stay protected here. Let's look at the map. Okay, wipeout. This is not good. Let's see how the enemies like set themselves up to defend. Okay, they push into the base. They get behind you guys, right? So, like, Onyx here, you have enemies behind you. See, and, and now they kill you. It's kind of like you need to get into defense mode. And basically, you shouldn't like focus on the tower too much. Like, how is it called when you, when you focus on something? Basically, you get tunnel vision, right? You're like, oh, we need to get the tower back. But what you need to do is not necessarily get the tower itself, it's just try to see where the enemies are coming and shut them down, right? Y your goal is to get the advantage on them, get their numbers down maybe even get a wipeout and then the tower is free for you to get right but if you try to get the tower and then you get splatted from behind because they went around you then it's not as useful okay next one what can we learn what should we learn today additional window okay next one it is oh i see a code no that's bunny where did this one Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's a long message. Ooh, this is an answer to this one up there. Okay, let's see it. So this one, collective by E no collective. I don't know. Ends up going <laughs> crazy, yeah. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. So, code. Um boop. 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 Would you have an easier time reviewing if you paused after a play to talk about what happened? Mm, maybe. I mean, if I don't feel like like it's especially hard for now, but maybe it would help with pacing. So I'm I'm open to suggestions and, and changing the way I do it. I, it's the first time I'm doing it. I know I know. Uh, Squid School does it whenever he reviews. He I mean Jem, he pauses that way he can talk over stuff. Um, there's advantages to doing it that way because then you can you're not gonna miss important things and you can like analyze every single detail 
if you want to like really scrutinize a clip it's cool um, but then also some disadvantages is that you don't get an overall picture of how fast the game went right like the pacing of stuff and like if you want to get through a lot of clips then it, it's kind of gonna slow down things um, I guess I don't know uh, let me take the code the code from collective uh, ROM Um, it's funny because like he wrote the letter O, but it's actually a zero, and I know that because the game doesn't let you input O; it only lets you input zero. So cool! Thank you, thank you, game, for not um, allowing similar-looking characters. That's cool. H four one U T four E five. E4 and maybe okay since I'm even smarter now that don't move phase I should probably do it before the stream right <laughs> it's probably something I should do before indeed we're learning we're learning not only about the game but also about how to do cool VOD review stuff so let us see um, so okay team composition first um, we've got first let's look at the enemy team we've got a squiffer we've got Hydra 52 gal and a splash interesting and then on the other side we also got snipers we got some close range with the carbon and stuff and the try and the end zap okay I don't know we'll see how it plays out I don't, I don't, I don't it's not a matchup that tells me anything in particular um, okay. You, do, you just seem like you were racing just to say what you wanted to say. Well, I'm, I'm racing because English is not my main language and it's kind of hard to... It, it's like, it's just because I'm not that comfortable with the language yet. Okay, interesting rollouts. Well, I'll get, I'll get better at it. Uh, let's go back to collective. Okay, so already one down. On, okay, there, good. Okay, the Hydra is down, that's cool. Good painting. Okay, I saw someone on the right. So that's something to keep on the lookout for, yep. Okay. For now, they're, it's good, good fighting. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's like, I mean, I, I don't want to get off topic here while I'm focusing on the gameplay, but this is real good, actually. I mean, I feel like the end zap is getting kind of into dangerous situations a lot, but it's, it's managing to handle those situations, so I don't have any special complaints. I mean, I, I'm not a pro anyways that could, like, say, no, this doesn't work in comp play, because I am not playing competitively, but this looks legit to me. And now, they've got the advantage, framing base after the, uh, like, during mid-game, after respawn, that's cool. Personally, if I would put the sector, I mean, personally, I would have probably put it behind the cover. That way, all the teammates can get it safely without getting exposed. But I guess it's also providing a bit of cover there. I mean, not that you're using it right now, so it depends on what you need to do. I I rarely see any time where putting the dactycooler as cover would really work that well. Maybe if there's a sniper, right? It can help you. Sometimes, maybe, um, but usually it's better to put the tactical in a very accessible spot. Um, okay. Bo says I had to reload the stream because I was sitting on the dead stream for 15 minutes. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, so that's a very solid game. I'm not 
good enough to point out little mistakes because this looks very solid to me uh, to uh, on my level uh, also uh, Neon Wyvern says I couldn't tell because you speak English just fine so here's the deal I'm training nearly every day to like like say voice clips from like video game characters and basically like say them one-to-one -one exactly right so I know how to make English words sound great, but I'm not necessarily that good at making sentences um, feel nice, right? Like sometimes I'm, I miss some words that would be really like the correct one to use in, in a specific situation, um, just because I don't have the experience yet with talk. Like it's it's very recent that I started talking with people actually in voice chats, making streaming and stuff, because um, that's not my my usual. I, I'm more of a text guy, right? The the people who stay in, in chat and uh, just lurk in there and send a lot of messages. But anyways, next clip from Apple. Uh, here, whoop, additional window. So the clip from Apple that uh, had a very big answer. And maybe what we can do after we, we check out Apple's gameplay, we can check out the answer and maybe learn some things from the answer that maybe we we wouldn't have figured out on our own. Bo says he has a cool replay. We're gonna check it right after. So, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. this is R five eighty four. I should also put markers. Uh, need to think about this. Mm-hmm, door five, G H F B X G M Y X G M Y Boom. Hopefully that works. Okay, that works. Download. And let me just for for the sake of being faster, I just input the code now. Your code R, -R G five uh, NJP51 Why is my brain struggling right now? Yeah, JP51 Asnu um, B15Y Okay, and now we can check them Let's go View replays. Uh, Popcorn Bunny only tell, only tell is your O like good has a little of an O sound instead of the, the is that a schwa? Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause I know. Cause English people uh, love to use the schwa in many places, and that's that. Yeah. That's a good tip. I should probably focus on this more. Like good, good. Go yeah. I see it instead of good. Yeah. It's it's very good. Oh darn. That sounds much more natural like an English person actually but anyways uh, <laughs> let me let me just put markers real quick slash marker um, okay and then marker because because I if whenever I'm gonna edit it for YouTube and stuff um, I don't want to get lost I want to remember how many replays I did that way it's easier to scroll through so we did one two three right uh, marker did three replays Okay, start of four, bam, and that's and then I'll do it silently without telling you guys because you don't need to know. Team comp, uh, blob. Wait, no, which one is that? No, okay, let's take this one first. Um, this is on Clamlets. Interesting on on Sturgeon. We've got some midline weapon, close range midline, uh, and also the Tenta. And the other team has some good range to combat this, so that's cool. Uh, let's check it. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I am dumb. I am dumb. I haven't hidden the window. It's fine. I'm not dumb anymore. Good. So, let's take a look at the team rollouts. I'm also very curious about the tent umbrella. Good. So we're watching Apple. Where is Apple? Uh, on on Y? Nope. Uh, on this. Okay, already one down from the enemy team. That is interesting. Mm 
Okay, pretty good. The only one left is the Tendabella. It's not gonna do much on its own. Because getting one shots with the Tenta is very hard. Yeah. Okay, so now the question is how are you guys gonna set up um, to take advantage? Mm hmm. Okay, for now it's safe. Whoop. You guys have all of your specials. Oh, yeah, we're playing Clam Blitz. Okay, good, smart. Oh, wait, we can also take a look at the map. That's cool. Uh, we totally missed the double kill. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. I have nothing to say really on this gameplay because it's mainly lurking. Um, okay, hold up. You know, I'm gonna be smart. Let's take a look at the at the Discord again. What did they say? Probably my best clan blitz round so far. I know my aim is off quite a bit during some parts, but any tips for improvement is appreciated. Um, so first thing is that during the replays, since there's kind of, um, like it's not replaying exactly how you saw it on your screen, it's replaying what it saved from the, the internet connection, the, what the match transmitted to the other players. So the thing with that is that usually you see some delay between like the shots and like where your camera moves. So th that's why whenever you see sniper gameplay on a replay, the laser kind of moves forward and it, it's kind of like weird. Um, so things about like aiming, it's harder to, to say, like, unless it's a blaster or a really slow firing weapon, then it's, it's very hard to say where you aimed or if the aim was off. So that's, that's something with the replay, sadly. Um, but then, okay, they say they're, it's their best clan blitz round. So if it's their best, I don't see exactly what we could tell them to improve. But hey, where are you going to see? Oh, hide the window, hide the window first. Okay. Okay, good good call here on the on the crab to, to defend the the push. Yup, pretty good. What I would probably do here um, would be to get up the up the tower here because it gives you a vantage point to fire from. Wait, what is your weapon again? It's the... Um, yeah, it's the, the splash. Which The splash is good because it has perfect accuracy even in the air. So usually what I would do... Can I... Can I move the camera? I cannot. Can I move it now? Can I pause? I can. Can I move while being paused? I cannot. This is sad. But usually, like, you see on this map you have a lot of... I mean, I can't... I can't move it. I can't really show my mouse either. Like, I mean, you know the platforms, there's a lot of verticality on either side of the map. So what you can do is like, try to get control of the walls on their side of the map, right? Uh, especially, I mean, I guess I could show it on, I don't know if I have any practical ways to do it. Um, but just get control of the walls, try to get up top where, where you see the, the um, blue enemy player fight here. And then basically you've got the high ground and you can defend that, the, the lower spot better without risk of dying. You can paint at your teammates' feet to help them get the clams in um, without risking to die yourself. And what's good about your weapon, the Splash, is that it, it has perfect accuracy in the air, uh, which makes it a great weapon actually to play off verticality and jump and also do stuff like squid, squid rolling out of the wall, right, to get invincibility frames. And if you're good at it, you can like squiddle out of the wall, basically be invincible, and uh, still aim perfectly at the enemies. Okay, this is pretty cool. Nice. Honestly, for now, it's a very solid game, as they said, so nothing to add, except like some tips to maybe like control the zone even better. Ooh, okay, Splat Bomb Direct, interesting.
That was a risky jump. <laughs> yeah, and see what I would have done there is instead of jumping down and here having like just to struggle to get back to safety, I would just like stayed up on the wall and try to ink it and basically just stay there and provide ink for my teammates to provide additional clowns in the basket. Okay, here I see enemies. Yeah, enemies are... Wait, no, that's the other side of the map. I'm confused. So hold on. Yeah, no, the map, okay, the map is secure. Well, that's a great game. It's going great so far. Nearly the end. Okay. So I guess there isn't... Ouch. Well, yeah, I, I guess since it's the end, there's no real way that they're gonna win. What I would have personally done... I mean, again, it's like... It wasn't really useful, but like, instead of like picking the clown and like keeping it, you could have thrown it to be like that tiniest bit more... Less visible to be able to kill the enemy team faster, I mean like better, so that they wouldn't win from the overtime, which they're not gonna do anyways because like you totally dunked on them, but you, you get what I mean. Okay, Popcorn Bunny says another English tip, I'm not sure if you've heard you say anything. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if you've heard you say anything with the sound, but it's a lot of ESL, we we'll overpronounce the D in words with a DR like drum. In natural English, drum is pronounced like like it has a G at, at the start. Drum. Drum. What does ESL mean, by the way? I'm sorry, I don't know the terms exactly. Um, but yeah, drum, drum. I, I think that's how I pronounce it, drum. The drums. Um, anyways, bow. Battle replay on Turf War with the Blob. English has a second language. Yeah, kind of. I mean, yeah, kind of. The Neon Wyvern. I like the Crap Tank usage. Always popping it to help secure the basket and, or get into it. Yeah. Using a Crap Tank to score points instead of just get a peek here or there. True. I mean, the Crap Tank is really... It's slow, so you're not going to do anything by yourself. It's more of a team play weapon. It's kind of like the Hydra, right? It's basically your... Your special that turns you into hy a Hydra for like five seconds, you're not gonna do like solo plays with the Hydra. It's a team weapon, and then you've got. It's basically the crap tank is like for for however many seconds you can become both a Hydra and an Explosher, right? And you you get to choose and swap between them real fast. Both of these weapons are not for solo plays. They're for assisting your team. That's what they do best. So that's what you should do with the crab, or maybe get some. Invincibility with the ball form, I guess. Keep in mind that I'm B rank player, so I'm pretty bad. Well, we're, we're gonna see. Also, the enemy team seems like pretty memey with the blob, with the with the um, arrow spray, and with two chat squal the squal the jewelly squelchers. Yes, I'm struggling with names. I'm sorry. But you, on your side, you've got machine. Um, I guess that's all okay. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I, I'm I'm struggling to find team composition stuff to say because I'm not that good yet. Okay, so this is turf war. Do 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 do. Okay, so first thing, uh, I think. Just, just from watching the gameplay, I can feel like you're not playing with motion controls. <laughs> but okay, okay. We're not gonna talk about that. That was a very random squid world. <laughs> okay, let's look at the map real quick. You guys have control of the middle. That's cool. Uh, bow is down on the D-pad. Okay, already using your uh, Trazuka. That's cool. They got two specials, though. Maybe I'm, I'm saying stuff too fast and it doesn't apply anymore. What's happening here? You guys are pretty much shredding them. They're like two down. 
three down. Yeah, they're not gonna do anything here. Uh, Bo is staying chill on the back. Okay. I guess what I would suggest if you're already that far is maybe take, like, secure a position forward. Paint a little more in the corners, right? What I like to do personally is like, you see that uh, little bit of obstacle here? I don't know how these things are called. But, like, I like to hide behind because you, if you get close to it, you can actually see through it. And the enemies cannot. So you can see them coming and shoot at them at the exact right time. And they don't even know you're there. Um, so that's a little tip for you guys. Um, rip internet. Oh, did I cut off? Darn. I'm sorry if I cut off again. I don't know what's happening in my internet. Ooh. Okay, so here I would just back off personally. I wouldn't even fight this. Because you've got last behind. Okay, that was a very risky drop. Yeah. It, it's hard when you try to go somewhere and, and since it's off screen, you just end up being in danger. Like. It happens to me sometimes, I just like try to escape a fight and I just like hear the, the last second of a splat bomb exploding or what is it, the suction bomb? And then I just die and it feels terrible because I didn't see it. That's sometimes it happens. It's basically, it happens whenever you get into a situation where you're too focused in on the fight that's happening in front of you. So you don't really notice what's happening on either side or maybe a bit behind. So maybe there's a fight going right like to your side and slash a bit behind with the, with your teammates and some enemies and one of the enemies throws a suction bomb that's not aimed at you that's aimed at your teammates but then the fight continues and since you haven't paid that since you were focused on the fight that was happening in front of you and you don't remember where you're coming from and if it was safe or not then you might just end up running into a suction bomb right and that can only happen if the enemies have managed to get behind you basically because, I mean, if they're all dying because you kill them and they all keep respawning in front of you, then there's not going to be any suction bombs behind you. Or if there is, that means that the person in front of you threw it, so you know that it's there. So you, you know how to escape it. Um, so, yeah. I, I, I'm not a pro myself. I don't really watch pros that much either. So I cannot tell you specifically how they play. But I'm pretty sure they would not go farther than the enemy line, right? So, like, usually, I mean, in my mind, if, if I see pros fighting, they would probably be... They would probably have a clear divide of where each team is. There would not be someone that would be let to run around freely in the enemy team. Because that that's not going to work. That's going to be shut off real soon if you're a pro. Like, you're going to see that guy, you're going to instantly delete it from existence. Um, so, yeah. You are back. Yeah, I'm back. So I'm really good with tri Trizuka, says Bo. Yes, the Trizuka is really satisfying to use. Anyway, next replay. <clears throat> Let's see. Ooh, we've already been going for an hour. Okay, so this is Apple, which we did. Okay. By the way, Clamblet's round. So we said that we wanted to look at the, um, at the info that they... The feedback that they gave. So that is a very clean Clamblet's round. Do their great job holding mid and keeping their team from over getting, ever getting anything going. Yes, I like how you use crap tank on objective pushes. Yes, is it showing? It is not showing. Let me show it. Whoop! Okay, here it is. Can I even make it like whoop, bigger? Whoop! Hello. Okay, this is better. Uh, over there, maybe. Whoop! Okay. Uh, first thing I'm noticing is that early on around 415 when you had when you and your teammate are in their base Your teammate had seven clams and you had enough to test them one to form a power con I'm not, oh, oh, when you're in, are, are in there, but yeah, okay Next time it happens over there you toss a clam to your teammate, but they needed two to form a power clam You or your teammate ends up scoring both times anyways, but I wonder if you could have gotten a stronger clip only you should help them form the power con Okay, for asking if is it it is worth asking yourself if scoring at zero four fifty five was worth it. You had them three down, so it was a safe basket. But your team wasn't with you. You weren't able to actually score. Instead, just reduce the penalty. You had a safe lead already. And the pity clam. 
is what ultimately allowed them to get over time. You definitely weren't in the... Ooh, that's a smart thing, actually, because whenever you open their basket, there's a clam that drops from them, and then it allows them to have overtime. So that's a, that's a smart thing uh, smart thing to keep in mind. Well, I just learned something. If you don't want to get overtime and risk getting smashed, don't throw, don't open the basket, basically. Don't, don't get overzealous. Um, oh, I see some new messages being written. By cruel. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm really good with stick control, so it's basically me playing motion controls. It's not quite that, but I mean, it's fine. If you play good with stick controls, then that's perfectly fine. It's just, you know, you, you gotta do the funny and say, Oh, you, he, he's playing with stick controls. Oh, no, bro, you. We don't like this. Um, but anyways, we've got more replays. Um, R, V, N, W, K, P, 4, 4. G, H, 7, C. And then FK ninety-eight. And that is the correct code from Blebelin on Ilte Ali on Splat Zones. Interesting with the fifty-two gal. Hmm. Interesting. Let's view it. Whoop. Here. Okay. So team composition. Blaster. Slusher, lots of stuff to hit around corners, which is good on, on Eeltail. And on the Allied team, I guess the only thing that could hit around corners is maybe the Nautilus, if you get into cool spots with it. Uh, but the Range Blaster is def it's probably going to be a problem in terms of your range. Uh, so it's probably like the Nautilus, ah, the Nautilus is going to have to shut it down. Uh, if you, if you, that would help. I'm really good with the stick control, yeah, no, no, no. And yeah, about, about like motion controls, because you, you know Frog, right? And so basically he was also a stick player before, and then he switched to, to motion controls, it, and he was like, oh, that's weird. But also I'm doing extremely good, that's, that's weird, right? So, okay, let's see. 52 gal. Boop. Interesting rollouts. You guys are spreading off more, which is good. So you are on either side. Okay, that was risky. I guess, does the 52 gal have range? A lot of range? Yeah, it has kind of a good, decent bit of range. What I would, what I'm thinking, because whenever I, I watch, um, hold up, whenever I watch Dude play, uh, that SRV2 dude, I mean, I, I don't see all the weapons he plays with, but I feel like from his playstyle, he plays at the max range of his weapon, usually. He doesn't really get close, unless obviously he's fighting with, uh, like, stage hazards, like some, some cover and stuff. But usually he... He plays at the maximum range, right? There's no reason for you to get closer. For example, if you're playing with a 96 gal, and you're playing against uh, an aerospray, there's no reason for you to be at the same range as the aerospray can hit you. The point for, for like, the thing that makes you better is that you can hit him from farther, where he, he himself cannot hit you. Oh, frog. Did someone say frog? Yes, we did say frog. Um, so yeah, the point is, like, play at your maximum range, because especially in Splatoon, uh, the thing with Splatoon is that um, weapons don't have, like, like in other games, you don't have guns that have shots that arc. Um, where like you need to aim higher or like the range is dependent. The range is like the shot goes as far as it can, then it drops down instantly. And it, it just it just drops down, right? That's how snipers work too. Like it makes a, a powerful line. And then when the line is shot, the line just drops flat onto the ground and makes a, an ink trail, right? So just play at your maximum range because... Unless you're at the range where it starts like to taper off and do less damage or be kind of inconsistent, anything before that, it just works perfectly. So just play at your max range.
Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't quite pay attention. But yeah, that was a killer well kill. Okay, wipe out, not good. Okay, the enemy team is pushing. Uh, he's still somewhere in here. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. So currently you can see... Yeah, all of the enemy team is currently pushing. Boy, that's weird, because I can see them all on the map, but I don't think you guys can see them. Yee! Okay, that was risky. I mean, obviously, here I guess what I could suggest is like... Basically, you try to get on the ramp, but there was a lot of enemy ink on the on the left side because obviously the enemies were pushing. So like, yeah, there wasn't a bomb when you started jumping, but I guess that's something you can maybe like try to to predict. Like, do not try to navigate into terrain that is not fully protected. Right? Usually, you want to have like paint forward. Right? If you're gonna push forward, just continue painting until you have basically a big circle around you of safety that you can always escape from. So yeah, here you're kind of getting on the on the top tower, but I see yeah, it's not really safe because there is a lot of enemy ink on on either side of you, so there's no real escape route. And obviously, enemies were also behind, as we can see on the map. Yeah, that that's risky. Yeah, and here you're kind of cornered by two enemies on the left side, probably some on the right side too. I mean, it's cool that you're okay. Yeah, I'm okay. So here's. I'm, I'm sorry, here's a problem of mine. I'm looking at the, um, the people who are dead, because that's a thing I learned that you need to do. Uh, like, really pay attention to whoever's on the team, when you can make pushes and stuff. One thing I'm not good at yet is taking a look at the freaking scoreboard and seeing, oh, frick, only two points remaining. I do need to make a crazy push and not pay attention to my safety, because we do, otherwise we lose, right? So yeah, I'm sorry for not paying attention to this. Okay, some nice juice. Okay. Yeah. From what I see, you try to basically get to the enemies to assist your teammates, but the route you take, right, you, you, you go on a wide arc to get to the enemy that is that is going through a spot that is not safe, right? So as you were going to assist your teammate with their, their the enemies they were fighting, you kind of got shot from the right, which is it's not ideal. I would have probably jumped over the, the terrain, maybe like try to play more sneakily, basically. Ouch. Here, instead of following them, right, I would have just cut them off on the on the left, right? Just just cut them off on the left, paint, so that they cannot go through. And so their only option is either to paint over you, and while they struggle to do that, you can kill them. Or then they, they just back off because they're like, oh no, he's blocking my path. And then they go around the other way. And basically, they, they go back to their side of the map, right? And you can stay in into your, your spot that's closer to your side, closer to your ink, closer to your escape routes. You don't have to get into danger. You basically tell the enemy where to go, and they don't tell you where to go yourself. You're the one to decide. Okay. Ouch, 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 I got hit from behind there. Yeah, right? Really, really watch the corner, that's one thing. Do, do not get over-focused on the objective. Or, or maybe do, sorry, I'm not looking at the scoreboard. But yeah, here they have like the um, the extra points to get down. So I guess here the most efficient thing to do is just not die. Because if you die, then they're, they're gonna score more. Just try to stay safe. It's fine if, if they are still taking down their extra points. As long as you're safe and you're moving forward without dying, at some point you're gonna get them. And when you get them, then you can take it back. Okay. That was a very... I mean, you, you should have probably shut down that 52 earlier. Okay. 
Okay, you guys are scoring. Oh, okay, wait, the score is darn the score. I'm not looking at the scores, it's real tight. Okay, I would just suggest you go to the left here. Just go to the left. Nah, this is not I, I would have just like backed off. Dude. Whenever I feel like I'm I'm slightly in danger, just go to wherever you can assure you're gonna be safe. Wait for your team to come back, wait for the for the respawns. And especially do not super jump like this. Like super jumping is really something that you you do occasionally whenever you feel like like you're like you're sure like you're not gonna die. And here, yeah, danger again. That was that was a useless push. I mean, you had to do it because the scores, obviously. But yeah. Okay, pretty interesting match. Do you guys have anything to say also? Do you have any tips of your own? Uh, I'm the only one saying stuff here. By the way, you guys can join in the um, server, which I've linked, which I'm going to link again because it's cool. Uh, you guys can, can join the server, join the voice chat, come talk live on the stream and say stuff. Popcorn Bunny says grinding out matches of my own at the moment. Noted. If you have some interesting one, just send them for the for the reviews, right? And it's going to be slash squid school again. There you go. Uh, please join the server. It's cool. It's buggers. It's a great ser server. Um, and also, I still see a lot of people in the other voice chats, but I'm still alone. <laughs> Lots of people talking together. And I'm here all alone. <laughs> Anyways, next one. Uh, do, 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 do. So yeah, this this was a pretty interesting match. Uh, if there was something to learn, is like just stay safe, back off whenever you're slightly in danger. Do not or like, don't push too much, unless you're looking at the scores and like me. <laughs> so, this one. Um, whoop, whoop. We're gonna put two at once, that way it's faster. So first one is air R0 W A E R M1 E R M1 5 D G4 5 D G4 and then the last one is not correct, it's 8 0 D0. So 8 0 D and zero. Boom, we enter it, bam, it works because we're great at typing. <laughs> okay, then the next one. Which one is the next one? It is that thing. Oh, that's hard to read. Um, it is R. Hard to read. R U L P K zero H L. Next time, I, I, I'm i sorry that I need to type them live. Next time, I'm totally gonna do that er, like before the stream starts because it would be so much uh, better. Uh, R Y 6 C E F E R E F E R. Does that work? Is that the correct one? From Dracoons. Yes, this is the correct one. Uh, okay. And okay, last one, just, just, just for the sake of it. No, okay, this one is the the early one, just with without the correct code. Okay, Turf War. Uh, team composition, two bubbles on Eel Tail on Turf War, interesting. Also Tanta Missile. Oof. Oof, two rollers on the on the ally side and two Tanta Missiles, uh, Reflux Spammer. Darn. Oh, first time chat from Call Me Kui. Cool. Cool? Kui? I don't know. What was that? Light mode. Yeah, uh, that's that's me uh, using light mode. Cause uh, I'm I'm a light mode aficionado, right? Light mode is for the OGs. Who remembers when Google was was in light mode? Pronounced quill, quill. Yeah, quill. Where where do you where do you find the I from? I don't see any I. Is it I or L or both? <laughs> I don't know. But he anyways, hello. Hello, welcome from the, the Squid Call server. I know you're from there. 
um, the new wyvern oh the new wyvern said a lot of stuff actually he gave tips so let's read them seems like the best room from for improvement on that replay would be taking a second to evaluate the situation before pushing in yes you know one thing that would be cool on the replays it's um like i don't know how they would do it but whenever you see the replay you only see what the player is doing right you only see what the character is doing but you don't have the replay of if they check that the map or like that's the point you don't see when they when they check the map at least if they had a little indicator on the side saying oh he's checking the map right now so that you can also do it uh, at the same time and try to get some information right because obviously you're not gonna get the same thing but like sometimes you just see the player just standing there you're like what what the frick are they doing why are they not moving because they're watching the map and then you maybe you see them super jump and they're like oh okay they were watching the map right lots of pushes when it was too orange yes true it, need to watch your flanks more and not not get into danger right <laughs> tasteless taste tester no that's a good splash tag yeah um this one came down to the way okay new replay from popper and bunny it's it's on the list uh, i'm gonna do it after these ones so let's watch this terrible terrible composition with lots of tenta missile spam let's see how that goes I mean, I guess you guys have a lot of tandem missiles, but they've also got a lot of, um, of... Okay, am I back? I'm sorry, my internet just does, does work currently, I don't know why. Okay, good. So I was saying, I was saying, this is, this is just gonna be... Uh, it's it just gonna be Tantum Missiles versus Big Bubbler, the movie, the game. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> lots of wacky stuff happening here. How's the map looking? This is Turf War, yeah. Naoto is fighting close range, okay. Wait, are we looking at the... Yeah, okay, the, the curb one. Ouch. I don't know, is there anything... Did they ask for any specific tips, actually? Um... Probably... ...for improvement there. I think do something too. Is OBS disconnecting again? I swear to God. I swear to God. Okay, whatever. It flickered. Okay, good. It wasn't a full disconnect. I'm sure part of it is not being used to or knowing how to use the bamboo skid and thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're gonna check your replay after that. So, what have we learned for now? Nothing. You guys are just rolling happily. Flatting, like rolling over people, spamming cantum missiles. Like that, that co team composition. Honestly, it's it. I I couldn't have been memeier. There's three rollers, there's three tantum missiles, and three big bubblers. What what else can you want? I don't know. Ouch. Okay, probably what I would suggest is instead of rolling down into the enemies to try to cover, right? And then, oh, no, an enemy popped up on my left. You should just basically maybe scout that there are enemies in that area by doing some flick shots, right? Jumping and shooting. And that way you can, like... Just put your ink down there, and if it bothers an enemy, he's gonna pop out of the ink, and then you're like, oh, okay, I need to be more careful around that spot. But basically, before rolling down an area, just like do a flick shot. If there are no enemies, you can like roll besides your flick and, and paint some more, basically. Because I think, like, even 
I think flick shots paint faster than actually rolling, so I don't know. Maybe just do flick shots. Maybe don't roll. Do not quote me on that, but I, I, it does feel like a better way to paint, in my opinion. Um. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, that should not have worked. Bro rolled right up to s the other guy to kill them. If anyone else was there, they would have been dead. Carbon, Carbon has an auto bomb for scouting. True. True. Some real tips right here. Uh, oh my god, the carbon recall. Carbon roll only if you just miss out on a kill with the flick. Okay, interesting tips. Good things to learn. So, okay, Clash Blaster. That's interesting. That's very interesting. I, li I like. Um, okay, team composition. Nothing too special, I feel. This is on tower control. Okay, tower control. So the bucket... The bucket is gonna be a pain on for the enemies on, on the enemy team, but you guys have the blob, the sniper, which is also good at shutting down the tower, and the clash, which is amazing at shutting down the tower. So this is probably a dunk, but we're gonna see. Also, did they ask anything specific about the clip? Anything better I could have done besides anything they could do? Okay, well we're gonna see. And, uh, uh, give feedback. So I'm interested in seeing the team rollouts because that's okay. We see the splatter shot is is flanking right there, so that's something to watch for. Uh, where is I forgot? Oh, up, okay. Okay, already got a spot. I'm sorry I didn't see that, but yeah. The, okay, the flank on the enemy splatter shot worked, so that is that is sad. That means they get the first push. So what I usually see. Uh, pro players do, I mean, usually see from the little I've seen them play, is like they really don't push at all. They, they're like, they get in front of the tower, then they just like spam fire on the tower. They just bah, shut down anyone trying to get on it, and nobody gets on the tower. It's just basically a competition of who can put more ink on the tower, who's gonna get it more wet, right? So, and, and then basically. You try to go, like, peek around the tower, right? Shoot the enemies. Once you get one down, then you can start getting the others down, and then they're gonna have to back off, and then that's your call to get on the tower. But basically, tr try to have, like, some people inking the tower, shutting it down, anyone going on there, and some people watching the flanks when you roll out. That's, in my opinion, the best solution. Ouch. Okay, you got a spot. Interesting. Cool. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't have jumped down here. I mean, I, I, I yeah. I mean, little stuff here. I guess let's look at the map and give more general tips. Yeah, probably you could do a flank through the top, right? The top of the map is not really covered. Maybe someone can get there, sneak behind. As long as the enemies don't look at the map. And then you can... Uh, where, where are you again? Okay, you're here. Um, yeah, just go wherever the enemies are not. If you see that the, the whole map is clear, not even enemy ink, not even allied ink, that's your call to get there and try to make a flank, basically. As long as the enemies don't look at the map. Okay, could you guys have the advantage? You could have probably jumped there since there was only one enemy uh, alive. Okay, shut down the flank. Boom. Okay, oh, so one tip I could give as a, a Clash Blaster player myself is like here you killed the the other guy, but you, you weren't really close to any wall, right? So if they turn and actually look at you, they're gonna kill you so much faster than you can because as a Clash Blaster, you really need to play off walls and like be safe for long enough that you can get your four shots in and actually kill them, right? Unless you can actually hit directs, then you need to have line of sight, right? But you always want to be close to a wall to be able to retreat. Because if you're behind a wall, you have to, they, they cannot shoot you. While they walk in to get to shoot you, you have time to get your four shots in and they're going to hit because you've got range around your blast. So do that, I guess. Cool, cool. That okay? That's that's what we like the Clash Blaster for. <laughs> Just obliterating anyone that doesn't look. 
get great. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so here, what I would suggest is you don't have to jump to hit above the tower, because it has range, right? The area of effect of the Cloud Buster is very good. So if you jump, basically what you're doing is just picking your head over the ledge so that they can hit you better. So just stay behind, because you don't actually have to kill them. The Clash Buster is not really about killing people. Uh, you just have to basically put your shots up on, on over the ledge, and basically, even if they're kind of farther from the ledge and you don't kill them with that, that's not the point. The point is that you can just spam up there and be like, no, you don't get there, you don't get there. That, the tower is going to be down there, but you cannot shoot at it because you're too far, because I'm not letting you get there. Um, so yeah. Okay, nice direct. I feel like what you could have probably done here, instead of jumping down the tower, just stay on the tower. Actually, if you want to kill the person, like, you didn't have to jump down. Just continue firing, maybe get behind the pillar, actually, so that you can have more cover while you keep shooting. And here, instead of, like, being basically fired at by the bucket, right, and being near enemies, you could have still been on the tower behind the pillar. And if they continue attacking, you can just jump off the tower and get back to safety. Ouch. Okay, this is bad. Disadvantage. Well, that, that push is now... I mean, it's over. And you didn't get the lead back, so that's sad. Ooh, ooh, again, you're getting into danger. That's... Okay, that, would, that didn't work out. Just play around rolls, right? If, if you would have hid behind this um, this little piece of cover on the left here, you could have like fired at the tower and they wouldn't have seen you and you could have hit them from there and basically shut down the tower here. You would have been alive, probably assisted your team better so that they wouldn't have died as soon, maybe, I don't know. And j your goal is to stay behind cover and just fire at the tower and prevent people from staying on there, right? W what you did um, a few a few seconds, minutes ago, basically you just killed three people that were trying to get on the tower, that were tunnel vision on the tower. They didn't look at you, they didn't shoot at you, and you killed them all because you're the Clash Blaster and that's what it does best. So yes. Bo says I organized my Discord and uh, I left like... 15 unwanted servers. Good. That is great. Being organized and having less clutter in your life, less notifications, is great. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You're getting too close there. Yeah, main, mainly do not get close. The Clash Blaster is not a, it, it's not a Slayer weapon. Definitely not. Okay, flank, interesting, but do not push with the flank, do not push with the flank, this is too close, there was enemy on the left, and you died from the enemies on the left, ouch. Yeah, really, yeah, the, the best tip in Splatoon, do not get tunnel visions, I mean, as with any game, really, do not get tunnel visions, <laughs> just, yeah, just go back, go back, go back, you're gonna get splatted by this action bomb, you're getting too close, but it worked, but it's still too close, stay safe, okay, it works. But that was too risky, come on. Okay. No! You No you get you got pushed by the tower in the suction bomb. Ah There that that was pretty good. You you stayed behind the cover there, the, the ring cover, and you fired at the um, at the I forgot which one was it? I forgot which weapon it was. But you should have stayed there behind the cover and just continue firing. Just, yeah, I guess. I guess this is what low level suck, uh, Flash Blaster looks like. I mean, it's not like we're really gonna see any high level Clash Blasters because nobody plays the Clash Blaster at high level. More general note is that there's largely a lack of information of where people are, are before pushing. Yes, true. And that applies especially to the Clash Blaster, because it, it's it's very much a weapon that needs to stay safe if it wants to get easy kills. It can get very easy kills, 
but it can also get killed very easily. If that makes sense. Hold forward only works in low ranks. Yeah, exactly. What you could do, actually, um, if you do feel like you want to attack further than your range, but there's no real cover to get protected and, and stuff like this, you, you have the spot bomb. The spot bomb is great. Just just try to get snipes little, or like defend some the tower, right? You, you aim your spot bomb at the tower, you defend it without having to get in close or like having to struggle to find cover. That's a great alternative. But yes, do not mind me giving more tips for a Clash Blaster match because I'm a Clash Blaster player. <laughs> Okay, so the two clips are done. Let's take a look at the clip from uh, Mr. Popcorn Bunny. Uh, was it Popcorn Bunny? Also, seems like the player... Yeah, some, some earlier messages I missed, sorry. Seems like the player is playing Curtain Roller, like a Splat Roller, which is a bit weird. They seem to prefer the rolling instead of flicking, but the roll is so bouncy. <laughs> One time I got uh, bounced off the map in Salmon Run by the glow flies. That was... bad. But anyway, yeah, Carbon's best feature is the insane instinct from Sharking. Yes, I definitely feel that. So where's your clip uh, that I need to take a look at? Okay, it's here. Also, I'm gonna um, once I input the code, I'm gonna read the new messages. I'm sorry. So R G H V three X N seven three X N seven. One six 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 one six 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 four H seven B seven and B and we input the code and the code is it's working bunny with the bamboo on Wahoo World on Turf War. Interesting. I mean the bamboo does paint very good. Oop. Let me read the messages. Okay, I'm back. Oh, another code. Okay, great. Let me let me put this one too. We're gonna look at two bunny matches in a row. Uh, whoa, favoritism. <laughs> it's not fa favoritism, it's just that I know this weapon better. <laughs> okay, uh, code, code, code. Uh, let me look at the code. The code is 3x and 7. Actually, could you guys read the code to me? <laughs> just, just read it to me in the chat, please. Wait, hold on. Oh no, you just put the same code again. Oh my bad, my bad. Okay. Well, let's look at the game. So, what's the team comp? It's in Turf War on Wahoo. They got Tenta Missiles, they got the Hydra and the Bucket. Bucket is gonna be good at hitting above ledges and stuff, which it would, there, there is a lot in this map. Uh, you've got the Blob, the Goo. Okay, you got some weird weapons in your composition. I do not know how it's gonna play out, let's see. Looks like the player lead needs to learn their range. They're picking a fight when they're not close enough and getting area of effect damage instead of direct. I only know this because I have to finish it. Oh gosh. Well, okay, just quick note. I know I started a new replay, but... Usually, personally, when I, whenever I play a clash, I do not go for directs, because... I mean, I, I guess you could do if you aim well enough, but that's... I mean, if you really want to go for directs, just take a splatter shot or something, right? It has nearly the same kit, it has the Trizuka, or if you want the the splatter shot Junior, because it has, like, less accuracy if that's what you're looking for, and it has the the Slad Bomb if that's what you're looking for, and the Big Bubbler. Just play with the area of effect, that's what you're best at. Like, directs are cool, but even two directs are slower than just using the splatter shot. So your best bet is just do what no one else can. Be annoying behind cover. <laughs> but anyways, let's take a look at this match. Oh, so this is match nine, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm I, I'm sorry. I'm late on the messages. I it's it's going too fast for me. Now I noticed because I had when I play Clash. Oh, so you do play Clash too? Welcome to the gang. That's the old one. Oh, never mind. It's that. Yeah, that's the correct one. I guess that's the symptom of the hold forward. Yes, Bamboozler. Mm -hmm. What is the wackiest comp I've ever seen? Yep, Bamboozler and Goo Tuber and Blah Blah Blah. Also, don't forget the two gimmick charges 
the other line of sight weapon class in a bathtub. <laughs> okay, anyways. Oof. Map. Okay. Anti missiles. Ouch, ouch. It's so much harder to give tips on turf war. I feel. Is there anything to say really? I mean, I guess personally I wouldn't stay on in cover so much. I would go and explore more. Yeah, because here... Yeah, basically you're staying behind. And... Yeah, you have a lot of range with your bamboozler, which I feel like... You should probably use that range to paint over the mill to basically shut off the enemies trying to get in. Because that that's what you do best. What's on your team also? Oop, no, this is the uh, okay, bamboo here. So I guess you got the Groot tuber, which has got pretty good range, the stamper and the blob blob blur. You should just use your range in my opinion. This way. Well mm, I don't know. Oh, let me read the next Wait, is in this pro? Uh, note on that you're a bamboozer and your playstyle is much different from other targets. Yes. Bamboo has the ability to play a lot more aggressively. Wahoo is a really awkward map because of the versatility. A stuff line of sight weapon. Yes, that is why the, the bucket is going to be pretty good. Playing it too safe, I think. You're a sniper, you're not an error spray. God snipe some scrubs. Yes. Especially do not stay in the corner too much, right? Because I think the range of the bamboozer is the same as the squiffer, maybe a bit higher. I I'm not quite sure. Probably the same as the as the Gucci but I think. It's close range, but not that close range. And your goal really, like the bamboo is a very great painting weapon. So just, just spam the shots. Basically, do not get kills too much because I mean you're playing turf war anyway so like kills are not that important but just shut okay just paint over paint the enemies right you can probably kind of compete against two enemies trying to paint the, their feet right and you can probably paint nearly as much as them and basically slow them down so much that your teammates will have time to get in and kill them also darn that went really fast had the reef spamming base at that moment. Well, yeah. Mm. True. I, I guess I don't know. I mean... I, I guess another weapon should have probably gotten in. Wait, do you, did you guys have a weapon that could have gotten in and actually killed them? I don't know. Uh, yeah, as a bamboozer, I want to be on the left side where there's more open. True, that feels like a sensible plan. I don't encourage the spam, the spam taps either. Agreed, left side seems better. Oh wait, uh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting confused between you two guys because um, on, on my chat visuals, you guys are both in blue. So I kind of mix you guys both up. Your kill time is faster by full charge tap or two partials. Do you even do partials on Bamboozler? Why? Just hold a split second more. Why do partials? Never do partials. You don't don't spam. Just hear the, the little beep. Whenever you hear the beep, you, you release. Basically have a nice sense of timing. Because you're going to paint farther. You're going to paint with like larger, thicker ink. And it's just better. Just You need to learn that timing. Because um, basically the, the difference is... Like, I'm pretty sure, do not quote me on that because I have not done tests, but if you strafe to the left or right and just spam the trigger, um, you're probably going to paint less than if you timed it correctly while strafing to the left or right. Because then if you time it correctly, the ink trails are going to be like farther and thicker, so you're not going to have spaces in between anyways, I, I guess, more or less. It didn't feel as logical to me. Um...
Who is... Wait, hold on. Okay, I need to read the messages and actually understand them. I should probably stay quiet. I've never played the BAM. Oh, okay, yeah. Boozle is all about getting good aim. Steady your aim. True. A split second is a long time in mid-match. Okay, diff the, diff the difference in partials is that it will kill in two instead of... In two instead of four taps. Mm-hmm. Full charge takes too long. And if you miss them, you probably scream. What do you mean full charge takes too long? It's the bamboozler. It's it's crazy fast. Hold on. I do not agree with what you're saying right now. Let me let me test. So also good thing. You have the replays there. When you're done, bam, you can just test because you're in the lobby. This is great. Love Splatoon 3. You gotta love Splatoon 3. Um so where is the bamboo? Where's our bamboo? Uh, whoop, we want the snipers, boom, bamboo. So, see, wh when, when you spam, bam, 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 right? It's, it's not that slower. Like, right? I, uh, like, bam, 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 and bam, 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 and... I mean, it, uh, I guess, because if you do bam, 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 right? And if you do bam, bam, it's faster. Like, you just saw that, right? One, two, three, four, and one, two. It's it's faster. Just do full shot. If you miss one, you just hit another one. It's, it's, it's just faster. Just use full shots. Never use top shots. Why would you use a top shot on the bamboozler? I do not get it. Um, And the whole point is, like, if you do top shots... You're gonna do like what, 30 damage? That's. I mean, okay, you, you wanna know? Okay, I never thought about that. But what you can do is like one full charge and then you can just like spam the, the small charge to hope to get a 30 and actually get a kill, right? So that's, uh, that's a technique. But if you're trying to aim for your first shot, just do a full charge. Because that way you can potentially combo with. Um, with. Uh, if your enemy, if your teammate hit a, a splat bomb or something for like, or some shots, right? Then you can probably combo and get a direct kill. Or, or like you just, instead of getting a direct kill, you get 85. So that way you can then just do tap shots. But there's no reason really to do tap shots before. Um, Parshas are faster than foals. Yes, they're, they're faster. Yeah, indeed. They are faster, like, if, if you spam them. Wait, that's... Whoa, whoa, okay, that's a lot of range for a non-charged shot. Whoa. Interesting. <laughs> that is very funny. But yeah, anyways, partials... No, I mean, like, each shot is faster, right? Each shot is faster, but killing overall is slower. Here, charging a full shot is slower, but killing overall is faster. So, if you do hit this, if you do hit a direct and then a partial, it's going to be faster than hitting two directs. That's true. But if you haven't hit a direct first, don't do tap shots. This is dumb. They, like, starting off with tap shots is bad. You should not do it. Just hit your first shot and then do a tap shot. Bam, bam. That's his dead. Instead of bam, bam. Right? Just bam, bam. Um, but do not do bam 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 because it, it, it's no, <laughs> do not do that, <laughs> please. Uh, anyways, going back to replays, unless you guys have some comments for uh, me, bamboo tap has full range. Oh yeah, by the way, I wanted to test the the range actually of the of the bamboo charge or not charge. So if we get there, mm -hmm. we aim forward, we do boop, and then we do. Yeah, okay, it has, it has, wait, it has it, actually? Because sometimes the painting range and the, the, but yeah, look, especially if you want to paint, never paint with this. Why would you paint with this? Why? Dude, I just paint with this. It's so much better, right? It's like, okay, let's do a little comparison here. If I do tap, 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 this is terrible. If I do boop, 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 this is so much better paint. Like, oh, that, tap shots on the bamboozer are a sin. <laughs> you should only do that if you want to finish off someone really quick after a full shot. 
Yeah, well, I think the range, I, I don't remember exactly, but ooh, let me just ooh, clear that up. So, the range on the bamboo. It is... Uh, uh, where should I put myself? I have no clue. Something like... Uh, I don't know. Let's go, let's go there. So, range on the bamboo. The range is this. If we go to the squiffer, the range is this. So it's slightly lower. And then whoop, if we go to uh, whoop, we go to the GooTuber, I think the GooTuber has the same range as the as the as the bamboozler, yes, exactly. And then it tap shots with the YouTuber are like this. So I guess, yeah, and the bamboo has basically full range even for tap shots, which is interesting. Um, interesting. But yes, um, so like it's slightly longer than the, than the, than the squiffer. And it's the same as the YouTuber. And I think it's probably comparable to the, to the jet sculpture, if I remember correctly. Uh, so if we find the jet right here, right? It should be around the same length as the jet sculpture. If I can, I can I clean the map up real quick? Boop. So, got the, what are you guys saying? Okay, you guys are sending a lot of messages. I'm sorry, I'm not reading them as much as I should. Uh, jet sculpture, quick. Jet sculpture goes a tiny bit farther, and then the 96. How does the 96 compare the, to these weapons? Oh, right here. Okay. Yep, pretty much the same range. And then maybe the squeezer. Um, squeezer, where is it? Yeah, so basically that's your range. You're kind of like. Slightly at range by the jet sculpture, and it may be exactly the same as these guys. Though, okay, do not quote me on that because this is the paint range, right? Which may differ from the actual hitting range, right? Because the fighting range is sometimes different from the painting range. For context, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, here you can hit the target, right? Here you cannot hit them. Wait, here. Ah, darn, it hits. <laughs> Please, game. What I, oh no 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 okay okay with the with the 96. So here's what I'm talking about. I mean Squid School talked about this, but basically this is your hitting range. Ow. Come on game. This guy. I do not hit it. But it paints behind like on his feet, right? So this is how far it can paint, yet it cannot hit beyond that point. Uh so yeah, that's the anyways, you guys got it. I'm reading the messages. I'm sorry. I'm I'm too slow. Um. Fast. The time it takes for you to charge another full one. That shooter has already swum up and killed your face. Um. Na, 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 na. Partials are faster than fools. Just finished up another match, getting the rep. Partials are not taps. Not taps. Partials are not taps. Bamboo tap has full range. Okay. B basic bamboo sword gimmick is always full range. Yes. Tap, taps, partials, and fulls are different. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. The point is you can get a full charge, then tap for the kill. Yes, this is true. New code, I'm gonna take a look at it. The neon wyvern, I didn't realize that its range was so long. Yes, we just talked about the range. I do charge strafing, it's just... Well, who's dog shit from? <laughs> Layout is awful for building with strafing. Um, bamboo always fires at its full range regardless of charge, at least for the damage shot. No way, dude. I think 96 is a little shorter than the L3. Maybe by like points, basically. But I'm, I'm not an expert. I could pull out the, the data from the wiki, but it is. This would take too long, and I'm already taking ages because I'm bad and dumb. I know what you're talking about. Okay. 
Good, good, good. Uh, so we're all on, on par now. Whew, let's input the code. Um, R twenty eight V. Also, let me put a marker real quick. Um, Y F three G. Uh, T nine forty four. And then zero EQ five. You enter that code that is invalid. Come on, Chris. Air two eight V Y F three G T nine four four zero EQ five. This is I entered it correctly, I think. Uh, so maybe you gave me the wrong code. Did you? Or is it just me? Um, the V might be a U. Okay. Trying that. Nope, still invalid. Do you not have a copy button actually in the app? Uh, but meanwhile, I'm gonna... Okay, meanwhile, I'll... T -A oh my gosh. I was gonna say I'm gonna take a look at another clip from the Discord server, but... Um... <laughs> yeah, so... Uh... Or... I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm bad. I should enter the codes before and stuff. I'm getting stressed. I'm sorry. Um, where's the code? Why doesn't one not want to scroll? Scroll, please. Thank you. Uh, Y F three G T nine H four, and then zero E Q five zero E Q five. Oof, we're done. No, it's still invalid. What? R twenty eight V. Y F three G T nine H four zero E Q five. Okay, okay, okay. That was a struggle. Both got it. Let's while we're at it, also take a look at the Discord server and take some more clips from there at the same time. That way we do it all in one go. Oof. So R C N N N F J G U A two G F G G K zero six. Okay, boom, we're done. Now let's take a look at the replay. Boom, 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 replay. Boom, boom. Let's see what we do, what we got here. We got some buckets. We got some jewelries, which are great for escaping a big bubbler. Good. Mm -hmm. Play. Oh. They, yeah, they avoided every ambiguity except V and U. I mean, it's not that ambiguous, except if you're using the Splatoon font. Okay, we're ba we're back. We're back analyzing the VOD, which is the point of the whole stream. So one thing that is cool actually is that you can apply the tips directly <laughs> into this game. Restart the VOD. Wait, why? Discord overlay. Oh my gosh, I am dumb. I am sorry. I'm sorry, guys. It's it's all going wrong. But anyways, the game started. Uh, people haven't got to mid yet. Good painting, as you can see on the bottom bottom right corner from Bunny. Cool stuff. They went on the left side, which is good. That's what uh, people suggested. Big bubbler in the middle. Interesting. Oh, I would have probably went back to safety there. Ba basically, what you could have done there, actually, is like, go back uh, through the left side of the map, 
because you had someone coming through your right and you can, you were kind of cornered, right? There was like that guy with the reef slider, I think. There was the guy with the inkjet and another person and you could have just went back actually because you've, you've still got enough range. So as the enemies converge to the middle of the map, you can still like paint from your safe corner on the middle of the map and basically contest them and prevent them from going any further while your teammates regroup and help you. Okay, so I feel like people are getting behind you there, maybe. Yep. Yeah, we'll probably get out of the... Oh, yes, 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 yes. So the people that were going from from behind now caught up to you, so you should probably watch this better. Basically, watch flanks. So this is going to be hard to get out of. Um, so let's see how you do that. Ouch. Yeah, okay. So the left side is good. Uh, though I don't really know if it's that useful in that situation. Okay. I mean, it's good that you're watching the people coming from there. I would have probably started, like, fighting more to the right, though, personally. But maybe that's not the right thing to do. Let's take a look at the map. There's still some fighting behind you, so you might want to watch. Yeah, right now you you got caught off, off guard by someone on your right. Okay. So how's the map looking? Real quick. We've got the, the bucket being annoying down there. Okay, you're gonna get contested from people on the right. On the left, excuse me. Yeah. Okay, so there, probably what I would have done is just get farther, because you have range, right? As, we, as we've seen, the bamboo has a lot of range. Right, so like there, you don't actually have to go in the middle if you want to fight these guys. You can just like stay where you were at, because it has even more range than the Swiffer, right? This is like getting on, on the edge of that platform would be a spot where you can do some squiffer kills. So with the bamboozler, you have no problem doing kills from there as well. Hmm. But you got some nice badges, that's cool. Okay. Let's watch the Nautilus uh, replay. And then, I don't know, do we do, we do more after that or is that... I mean, we've been going for two hours already. And you guys have stuck for the whole two hours, so that's cool. Thank you, guys. Um, okay, we've got some reflux. We've got some, some wipers, some rollers. Interesting. More rollers. Um, close range, long range. Mix of both. Interesting. Some of those plots were pretty sweet. I'm about to main bamboo now. Yeah. I mean, the bamboo is cool because it's a sniper, but you need to be double uh, as skilled as other snipers because you don't have to hit only one shot. You have to hit, hit both if you actually want to splat someone. So it's very satisfying if you can get it right. Sadly, again, through replays, like snipers are the weapons that suffer the most from being able to see the cool movements of the camera, right? Because whenever you see replays, it's kind of like smooth, smoothed out. Um, basically, they just use the data that they had through the internet connection, which is like not as much as the micro movements you're going to do with the sniper. So those shots were pretty cool. As I mean, just from seeing you killing them while being in danger, that was that you probably reacted great and had great accuracy and aim during a tough situation. But we didn't see that in first person. We can just assume that this is what happened. <laughs> okay, so Nautilus. Okay.
uh, in my opinion, the Nautilus could probably paint more on the left and right. Because um, it has... Yeah, basically they're just holding forward the paint. They're just painting more where they already could paint. Okay, this is terrible. They, they should have moved more, probably. I mean, you're, you're the Nautilus. It's not like you're a, a Splatoon that cannot move. You, sh you should make use of that ability. See, like, that whole section on the left? Could like, he could probably, like, turn his camera fa camera faster and cover more paint, basically. Get their special quicker. Just move, just move. Hold the charge! You're using a Nautilus, come on! <laughs> I'd wait for a better kit with bamboo. I mean, honestly, you don't need to wait. If you really want to try a weapon, like, for the main weapon, just, just use it. I mean, sure, a better kit would be nice, but you can still learn the main weapon. I mean, sure, you, you're gonna have to relearn the kit, but it's, it's not like... I mean, you've already seen what a splat bomb is or, like, what a burst bomb is, so you can, you can guess what it's gonna be like just from playing other weapons. As long as you get the main gimmick of the main weapon, which is where the most gimmicks are gonna be, then you're fine. And then, oh, the bamboo has a, a splat bomb. Well, it's not like you're gonna struggle to understand how to play a splat bomb on the bamboo, because it's still a splat bomb. Um, you just have... Yeah, I mean, you mastered the, the, the gimmick of the bamboo, so that's cool. Brawl does the exact same thing as an autobomb. Well, yes, except Well is a special, not a sub, so that's something you forgot. It means Autobomb can spam it more times, basically. Which is what you want for Bamboo, right? You don't want to only get killed slash displace people when you've got your special. You want to be able to do that at all times. Because that's the way you, you use the way, like, you use displacing people as a way to kill them. As a way to, to get them into your line of sight. Or maybe like you get some splash damage with the uh, autobomb. So you get a 30 on them. And then if you do a direct, you get a one shot. Because you combo with your autobomb. So that's cool. I love how we're giving tips that are totally unrelated to the current gameplay of this button. I mean... If I would give tips, because I feel like this is a pretty low level Nautilus play. Just use your main gimmick of, of the Splatling, of, of the Nautilus, just go into your ink with that safe charge. Um, paint more around your sides, because you it fires for so long, so just use that to paint more, get your special earlier. And um, I guess that's it, pretty much. Um, I... Okay, Autobomb is okay to force movement, but 12 doesn't really synergize as well. I mean, especially because, you know, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, Killer Whale kind of muddies the front of your view. So that's already something that's not quite as practical if you're playing a bamboo, because you want to have clear sight lines to see exactly and snipe precisely. Um, it does mainly, like, nearly the same thing as a bam as a not a bomb thing, little difference, right? is that the killer whale comes from the same side as you, right? So basically it gives you more firepower in your direction. And yes, it does displace enemies. But then you kind of have, okay, I'm firing at them. Where are they going to go? Left or right? Where am I going to place myself in comparison to the killer whale I just placed? Because if they move left and I move right, then basically I, I can't aim at them anymore. Because I displaced them and now they're on the other side of the killer whale and I can't see anything. To, I, I can't see where they are and aim at them correctly. Whereas an autobomb, the cool thing about the autobomb, you get to choose where you throw it. So like you get to choose the direction in which the enemy runs towards. You can also do easy combos with the 30. It's a guaranteed combo for a one shot. You get it more readily available. It doesn't block your sight lines. So in my opinion, autobomb is better than killer whale, personally. And, and also the thing is that it basically acts, acts as a little teammate for you, like a little on-command teammate that hits from the side, right? So the enemy is cornered between your autobomb on one side and you in another side, right? Instead of having both the killer whale and you firing with lasers from the same direction. 
it's not as useful in my opinion. Okay, um, what do, do you guys say? Well, current gameplay is, uh, they played like a hyper-aggressive heavy. Yeah, true. This Nautilus looks to be uh, playing a little too aggressively. It isn't quite the anchor weapon. Also, because, yeah, you, you're probably supposed to stay in your ink since that's the gimmick you're supposed to do. You're, you're Maybe, I mean, yeah, anchor. Though, I guess the Nautilus doesn't have as much range as... I mean, it doesn't have... It does have range, though. But usually, whenever I see um, Nautilus players play, they kind of play, like... Uh, skirmishers slash anchors kind of a mix of both right usually you see skirmishers also be slayers and you see anchors be also support well this one is kind of like anchor slash skirmisher for because because it can hide in the ink right it can like do some sneaky kills or is that slayer maybe i don't know slayer anchor or skirmisher anchor i don't know the exact terms but anyways you say um but by design it is better at cross firing than charging in yes the player was kind of in stand and shoot mode yes with splatling you want to charge behind cover and then peek to shoot they're just standing in the open yep nautilus is the only splatling that can get a kill recharge mid fire then swim away with the charge held yes but ball point gets close also it has more range um i like the ball point also, a lot of painting areas that are already their own color. Yeah, I, I think they just need to go ham on the camera. Just go paint more. Uh, it's like we talked about with using your max range to get a kill, but also applies to inking. Yes. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I prefer the term flank over skirmisher. True. I mean, I guess flank is not really a, a category of weapon, a role, a weapon role. Um, I'm just trying to use the terminology. I have no clue about the exact terminologies. But yes, it does flank. That's something it does. Uh, so, Discord. Do not forget to hide the window after you've used Discord. Oh, Chris, come on. So here we got Discord. We got this code, which was the Nautilus. I think I had a good second game with it. Second, okay, it was their second game. They probably don't even know that they can store the charge. Looking for tips to improve. Definitely got taken by surprise a couple of times. Yes. What I do? Cause I wanna... no, 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 no. Can someone critique this? Yes, we can. Let's go. <laughs> RR and five, and I'm probably gonna stop pretty soon because I feel like we did a, a good bit of uh, um, no, no, no. wait are we getting more messages down there I haven't checked uh, B 3 S O wait B 3 S O okay Q R 0 T 0 P G C P 9 Okay, enter the code, download the code with Xplosher on Macomart Tour 4, mm hmm Um, just gonna... Um... That's cool. Cool. CB Wahoo. What is CB Clumblet? Okay. Tristringer, hmm, interesting. I do like me some Tristringer matches because I do want to learn from this. I do not play Tristringer though. RXQ. Did somebody D. say Tristringer? Yes, hello Frog. First person that joins me in this server, there are freaking everybody in other channels, and I'm all all alone there doing VOD reviews with people in the in the Twitch chat. Oh, oh, I Mr. heard you say something about the Tristringer. Yes, because because um in the in the um, highlight uh, review VOD, VOD reviews channel, uh, people are post posting clips and there's one with the tri stringer from Mr. Quill, which is also in the Twitch chat. Um, so we're gonna check it after after the other one that I've downloaded. 
F4J1. So maybe you want to watch and give give some tips if you know. Do you play the Shrike Stringer? I feel like you don't, from what Eight. I remember. Hey, what? Actually, it's... no. The Splatoon 3 Shrike Stringer is currently my most used weapon. Really? Since when? Uh, since I used the weapon. <laughs> I haven't ever seen you, and I play with you kind of a lot. Well, I can show you. I have like 230,000 freshness or something on it. Darn, okay. Um, so we have an Explosher game. So lots of two long range games. Interesting. We're going to take a look at them. So we've got um, com team composition. You guys have got an Explosher and a Clash Blaster, which is great at hitting behind cover. And Makumar has lots of cover. And then we've got we've got uh, direct hit weapons, which is going to be harder for them. So hopefully you make use of this. Let's see. And also, Mr. Frog, if you have any tips from the gameplay you see, just go ahead. Just drop your hot tips in the voice chat because that's cool. Oh, you got. I think you got. Oh support. yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to hide the thing. I remember. I remembered. Thank you, Frog. I'm smart now. I'm getting smarter. Yeah, Discord overlay. <laughs> Got it. So, how's the match going? This is Dwarf War. So, where's our explosion? It's right here. Ooh. Is the jumping necessary, by the way? I feel like... Yeah, okay, you know, back, back when I used to play a lot of Brush in Splatoon 2, I used to always, like, jump in between my, my spamming of ZR to, to fire. Which I don't think it's really necessary because if you ever get into trouble and someone's like right next to you and you want to back off, if you're mid midway into the air, you can't really back off, right? You gotta like stop firing, wait to land, then start to accelerate slowly. Whereas if you keep on the ground, once you're done firing, it goes back into the ink instantly, and then you can also do some strafes, like you know the the main strafing and sub strafing. It makes you go. It makes you start to swim in a direction faster. So that's maybe something to consider. You don't need to jump. Also, it might also lower your accuracy. Um, not that I think it, that it matters with the explosion, but just something to keep in mind. Okay. Got a good control of the map. Though your side of the base is not inked that well. Also, you guys are all cornered on the right side, so you may want to start uh, getting set up on the left side, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a current brush player, jumping is still really good way to increase your range. Each jump is still a commitment, though. You're correct, it has killed me a few times, yes. I, I've personally learned to stop doing it. Because, you know, okay, honestly, if you're gonna need more range as a brush player, just use your swab weapon, you've got a splat bomb, it's it's the best bomb. Just use your bomb if you need range, and just shark in the ink, right? You shark in the ink, you spam splat bombs at range if you need to have the range, then if you manage to like get close to someone or they, or they get close to you, you get out of ink and you start firing real quick. And if you, like, you should be able to shark close enough to them that you don't need the extra range and to jump. And the good thing about this is if you like stop firing because oh they're going too far then you can just like stop firing and swim away because you you're not in the air right so you, you you're not as vulnerable and you also don't look as vulnerable because you're not it's jumping which i don't know maybe it looks vulnerable i, I don't know but point is you can escape better and also if you pair that with the um what is the ability called the ninja squid then you're basically incredible I didn't get a single map on Sturgeon. All wahoo. All misery. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I definitely see a lot of jumps. I don't know if they're really necessary. I don't know. I I don't play Explosher that much, so I cannot tell. Because I also feel like, you know... If you press the like physically having the controller in your hand, if you press the B button every single time, whoa, it's uh, <laughs> being transparent and whatever. If you press the B button each time you want to shoot, then it's gonna move your controller, right? So maybe like 
t keeping your hands on both sticks and just firing while not jumping and just like aiming precisely and just firing at ZR instead of pressing B every time and then ZR maybe allows you to aim even better actually. Unless you really need to have a slightly bit of height to hit behind a cover, but I don't feel like that's really necessary in most situations. Right? Like here, he wanted to fight that guy, and he basically just stopped jumping at that moment. Just naturally. To hit their, their shots better. Um, okay. Off the brush has suction, yes, it is very good. Um, Explusher is probably a different story though. I feel like reading the chat at the same time as I'm trying to focus on the gameplay is not a good thing. I need to learn to, to split the times of the... It's definitely okay, it's hard to do video content. It's definitely not easy. Okay, okay. Hammer working? Hammer works? No, no way. Uh, let's take a look at the map. Yeah, it's not looking too good. Uh, there's Scene Queen that's uh, way too far. Thomas is just respawning. Okay, good thing. Okay, uh, Thomas is. Where, where is it? Okay, here. Oops. Rain. I would have probably suggested here at the end, instead of throwing the rain on the side, you just throw it the farthest you can to the enemy base and try to get some more ink in there because it's turf war, right? Okay, let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. You guys are saying... Why does my chat not want to scroll? This is horrible. Um, Explosion is probably a different story though. Jumping gives you a bit more of that juicy range. Does it? Because, again... Splatoon is a, is a game that has like the range on weapons is not determined by the the arc, right? You you can't arc them. Jumping will not give you more distance on your arc because after the after the, your shot goes the max distance it can, it just starts dropping down instantly. Um, so we can test this actually right now. Oops, new maps and modes. Um, so my theory currently is that if you jump. It's just gonna like shoot from higher, but then at the same range as it would have dropped down if you didn't jump, that's where it's gonna drop down to. It's just like if you wanna get above cover, I guess you can, but like the cover really needs to be a slightly bit higher than you, right? Otherwise, it's not gonna do anything. So let's test this uh, right now. Also, let me read the chat, uh, continue reading the chat. So, whoop, we got the X plus right here. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, yeah, we all jump for the extra range, and in case of blasters, extra mobility. I think for exploit, it just depends on if you really need that extra range. I don't think in case of range, but we're gonna test this. Jumping out of ink is done to preserve a little more momentum instead of coming to a stop by tossing while standing. By tossing while standing. Yeah, okay, I get what you mean. But then, that momentum is a commitment. So, if you commit to having momentum forward... Because, like, that is the thing. Do you really need momentum forward with the brush? Maybe, in some situations. It's, it depends, it depends. But definitely not something to abuse. And definitely consider not jumping at certain times when it's more tactical. Maybe, like, as, as a recommendation, if you want to learn something, just focus on doing that specifically. So if your goal is to try to jump less you should actually focus the whole game on like basically never jumping. Even if you could have jumped and it would have helped you, just train yourself not to jump, just to have the discipline not to do it. And then um, you basically get that skill. And after those few games, you're going to have the knowledge of when to use it or not. Um, but okay, stamp moment. They fixed stamp. You can't do that anymore. <laughs> I mean, fixed. I don't know, it's still kind of wonky from what I've seen. Uh, jumping out of ink is okay, blah, blah, blah. They fixed the stamps on you, okay? You, can't, you can with Hydra. The first month has made everybody laugh in the face of stomp users and stead right in front of them, yes. 
I've hit a few shots of uh, E-Leader on stamps. That was uh, pretty bad for them. What's the best way to compensate for air spray's bad accuracy? Just get in the face of players. Uh, but anyways, Explosher. Explosher test. So, here is the Explosher. Here is the range of the Explosher. Okay, no, that, okay, let me, let me find a better spot, uh, here. Okay, range of the Explosher. Mm-hmm. Jumping range. Exactly the same. Like, literally zero difference. Uh, the only reason why you may want to use this is, like, so, let's say. Because, okay, here's the thing. If I do aim higher, whoop, see, it goes straight up. And then, whoop, it drops down instantly. And that's what it does. So as long as I hit the maximum range, whoop, maximum range, boom, it drops down. Uh, so here's where that could be useful. The places where it can be useful is like, so if I aim high, right, it goes to max range, then it drops down, boom, instantly. So let's say I can hit directly forward here. It goes to max range, then boom, it drops down instantly. If I want to hit above this piece of cover, I have to, whoop, go higher so what it's gonna do is gonna go whoa, 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 max range and then after it's hit max range it's gonna drop down but since the angle is like slightly higher it's gonna drop down sooner so as you can see here my, my normal shot hit further and this one hit like slightly more like earlier so here's how you can improve this if you get here and instead of like aiming higher you just aim where you're gonna hit the cover but just jump over it Boom, there you, you saved yourself a tiny more bit of range, right? As you can see, it kind of caught up there. But really, it, it needs to be, like, if you want this to really be effective at all, you need to be, like, basically there, you see, where you're going to hit on the other side. And then if I go there and I jump, like, that's going to save you so much more range, right? Like, look at this. This this extra bit of range can be, like like, if I stand there, I do not get hit. Wait, even if I stand there, right, I do not get hit by that shot. But if I stand in the same position for this one shot, I do get hit. So that's a huge factor if you are hitting a recover. But if you're not, it doesn't even matter. Like, that doesn't matter. It's the same. It's basically the same range. So that's a tip for you. Big tip. Um, what is the chat saying? The first mode, okay got some clips but Irish pre advice is play like a spoon. Holy crap I just realized you made it to S rank. Yes I did. It's pretty cool. Um then you're right. Yeah well yeah because the, the sploosh and the air spray are, are kinda the same. I think. What's what's the real difference? I don't know. I know what the difference is. The fire rates and the amount of, of uh, shots that are needed to kill. Y okay, do you guys wanna know a little tip? A um, little tidbit that I learned from watching the wiki is that some weapons are basically clones of each other, but they just have different firing rates and time to, uh, like, shots to kill. So let's look at uh, my favorite comparison. It's the. Uh, do, 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 if I can find it, it's the splatter shot. Can I find the normal shot? Oh, I haven't bought the normal splatter shot. But this is a splatter shot, okay? So, whoop. Splatter shot. The 52 gal. Uh, your stream kind of just um, died for a second. Yeah, okay, it's back now. Darn. Okay, is it back? Into ribs, go, go blue. Yes. No one buys the real splatter shot because hero is free. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, I, I, I have unlocked all the weapons. I, I'm just not gonna buy <laughs> the splatter shot just because the hero shot is better. Um, I've heard Gem say the contrary, actually. But anyways, these three weapons, right? The the splatter shot, as you can see, the ink trail for the splatter shot, for the end zap, and for the 52 gal, they're basically the same. I mean, maybe the 52 gal hits, like, paints farther, but I think the range is the same, the fighting range, if I am correct. Um, so here is... The ra here's the range for the 52 gal, right? If we take a look at the uh, splatter shot, the range is 
No, okay, never mind. I, I was kind of wrong. It's slightly farther, but it's basically nearly the same gun. And then you've got the same for... What were, what were we talking about? <laughs> Jam is a great teacher, but his taste in weapon skins is awful. Right? This is a freaking 3D pin printer thing with an ink cartridge, and it's, it's, it's cool. It's cool. It looks cool. Splatter shot is a freaking water gun. Who cares about water guns? Give me something like right. The gimmick is like, oh, we're shooting with ink and stuff. Oh, water play, whatever. Yeah, what's cooler, a gun made of of like ink cartridges and 3D printer filament, which ties into the story of the main campaign, or a freaking water gun? <laughs> um, he, flashing one hero shot is goaded. Yeah, it was kind of cool. Reading chat, reading chat. Uh, Jamie's saying, da -da, da -da, nothing will ever beat Splatoon 1 Hero Shot. That's not fair. Yeah. So, um, what did we want to talk about? I don't know. Oh, yeah, the Explosher? No. Were we talking about the Explosher? I don't know. I don't remember. We talked about the Arcing Shots, then we talked about the Weapon Skins, re Recolors. Whatever, but you got it. Uh, weapon go shoot different range, but it's the same weapon in secret. Um, air, air, oh yeah, air spray versus sploosh. So okay, okay. Here's here's the deal. Uh, plus we got we get the. Uh, whoop! Nope. Whoop! I'm struggling. Here, okay. So we get the sploosh here, right? Sploosh go, goes goes. Um, Sploosh goes here. Sploosh does. Okay. Now we get we get to the air spray. Air spray goes. Do I have the air spray? Yeah, I, I have it. Where is it? Where's the air spray? <laughs> air spray. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Where's the air spray? Oh, it's here. Okay. And the air spray goes. Basically, kind of the same range, except maybe you can argue the air spray paint is better because that's its point. And if you if we look at the fighting range, that's the range, right? And if we take Why a look are we at talking the about air spray again? We're, we're talking about the different weapons being basically the same, but uh, not really. And this one is section done, lobbing done. Also, OBS just quit. I hate OBS. Is it back? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know what's happening. I have like good yeah, internet. Your OBS kind of keeps dying. Like, yeah. It, it just dies. I have no clue. Whatever. Let's keep on moving to to the next. So call me Quill. Cool. Quill. Quill has a replay with uh, some wipers with the sploosh, which is gonna provide some uh, big bubblers and a blob. And on their side, they have lots of range. They have the Tri Stringer, the E Leader machine, which is going to be great at fighting over the um, the walls, actually, of uh, Wahoo World. And then you've also got the Brush, which is great at close range, playing over the walls. And yeah, I guess. So let's see how it goes. Your stream is allergic to air spray, maybe. <laughs> Okay, also by the way, this was an awful match, everything but the blob land ninja squid, and I have bad eyes. Mechanically, Sploosh is the best rat weapon in the game, while Aerospray is the best special farmer. Okay. I mean, true, Wh whenever I played it in Splatoon 2, I used to... I mean, I, I didn't really rat that much, though. I kind of get got really aggro, aggressive on the enemies. Okay, so here what I'm thinking is actually never mind. I'm not thinking anything because I'm I'm I never played the tri stringer, so I cannot tell you how to play it. I have no clue if you should play it like a charger or not. Watch out for on the left. Yeah. Okay. Good. So w whenever I'm gonna try to give tips on what you're doing, I'm probably gonna have a charger mentality because that's. That's the closest thing I know of. Oof. 
Okay, pretty cool. You got some clams in. Um, I could, I could, I guess I have a small tip for clamlets, which. Google just activates without me asking anything. Um. Okay, okay, Google, sure. Uh, no, oh my god, why did I, why did I say the hard word? Uh, anyways, tips for clam blitz. You can throw the, the clam, the big clam, for free without using any. Stop, stop, Google, stop, Google, please, Google, stop. I'm trying to do VOD reviews, Google. Google has left me alone. Not. I'm sorry if I haven't been commenting on, on the gameplay, uh, I'm struggling with Google. Never say- Never say the hot word, never- I'm not gonna mention the name anymore, I'm not- it, we don't talk about them, the, we don't say that name anymore. Anyways, that was stressful for nothing. Uh, clam Blitz, you can throw the big clam for free without using your ink and it paints in the spot that you- Put the clam. So what you can do is basically throw your clam at an enemy, and then it paints at their feet, and then you get an easier kill. Um, pretty nice kill. Interesting. Also, I love how like um, for freaking zip cast players always zip cast towards the basket and try to place the uh, the clam in, but they realize that oh. I can't throw the clam. That doesn't work. Um, so sorry if I haven't been paying attention. Uh, they're all gathered towards your basket, which is not good. They only have two players left. Good Booyah Bomb. Okay. Nice miss to check if the players are striking in there. Definitely not using more, definitely not inking the ground more than you. Just like to make sure that you can. Basically, just enough that you make sure that nobody can hide anymore. And what's good actually about the tri stringer is that you, you can do that, and since it inks in three different spots, with leave like little gaps, basically you can, you can spread out more and check more areas that are clear without enemies. And there are these kills are very, very clean. Very, very clean. Okay, so here's the problem with the replays. I feel that like, that's gonna affect the tri stringers a lot. Is that whenever you you do kills, right? You if you want to do one shots, you're gonna jump so that you turn your um, your your shots to vertical. The problem is that the jump, like you're gonna do a real short jump and fire like right after, and that's maybe something that we don't get to see on the replay because it goes so fast slash the the um, it didn't transmit correctly over the uh, internet so that's that's something that's that might be harder to basically visualize in a replay oh yeah funny zipcaster tried to throw the clam indeed <sighs> uh reading the messages I i'm sorry uh mechanically sploosh is the best right okay from what i've seen from other high level commentators treasuring should be played like an explosher kind of an explosion that can do one shot sometimes. Uh, stringers are not charges at all. Yeah, one. Well, yeah, I know. I didn't jump for half my direct stat match. Well, that's interesting, uh, cause that's what I saw. But I was like, is that really? <laughs> I mean, interesting. Very, th those are very well in the uh, or horizontal directs then, cause I mean, you, you know, humans, humanoid 
players are vertical, so like if you manage to hit with a horizontal shot all the shots on a vertical thing, good job, poggers. Uh, tip for Tristringer is to make use of the painting combo more in downtime. Fire an uncharged shot high, then one low to most quickly charge meter. Mm-hmm. Pretty good game. I don't have anything to say. It looks like how I play Tristringer. Okay, and anything you add. Uh, one thing I would say though about like the painting combo, painting combo, in my opinion, it does not paint faster. It's just if you need to walk forward faster, then you paint like at your feet and farther, and then you swim, then at your feet and farther, and then you swim again. That's if you want to swim while covering a large area. But then the question is like, why don't you just fire forward, then point down to fire? Doesn't that work too? And then my other question, I mean, my other opinion, I guess, is like, if you just want to like paint the most that you can, just fire a shot, move forward, fire again, move forward and fire again. Just space them so that the, the zone that it paints that's going to be like kind of forward in comparison to you, like, right? You're going to paint a line, a sort of quarter circle in front of you. So you just move forward and move that quarter circle forward and forward basically is what like I actually I can show you guys what I mean it's like because um, you also need map awareness right so you want to see where the enemies are coming from so if you want to paint good just do this then this then this then this basically you know you're just painting basically this like it see what I painted there you really need to do this then this then this then this or what, what this is awkward you can ju you can just do this. This works. Like, there's no reason why this isn't this isn't as well as this is. I don't I don't see. And then you can you can do this, like on, on the sides. Um, like, oh, hold on. Whoop. I guess what you can do is like side 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 side, and then you paint more at once, right? And it's basically. There are no gaps nearly, so that seems like a good plan. If you really want to paint a lot, just left, right, left, right, left, right, and that's pretty much good. I don't know. You guys tell me. me, me I'm not a tri stringer player, so I have no clue. Also, if you want to move forward, because like if you really want to move forward, you just do shot, maybe charge it a bit, then just fire it down. Or you can basically just like jump shot just jump shots work this does a line I see no reason to do anything else like if you want to paint just go left right left right all right that's that's pretty good amount of paint that you put down here like right that that whole zone is yours now you can navigate in it that's that's yours to play around in and if you really want to go into enemy territory that you haven't painted yet you just do this And that's how you play the tri-stringer <laughs> from a non-tri-stringer player. Uh, there you go. Anyways, go back to replays. Also, the messages. What are you guys saying? Please scroll. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, it's. I kind of sat around for a long time just holding my charge and waiting for someone to show up. Yeah, you probably want to paint more because it's it's not that bad of a painting weapon. Backlines in clams is weird. I mean, I feel like backlines are just there to assist the main players. Uh, so just, yeah, try try to paint for them. Uh, some of the yellow paint on the right is right in your base for me. But as a tri-stringer, I think that's your team's responsibility. True. Outside of the early wipeouts, we didn't have much of a foothold in the entire match. Yep. Clumlets and Rainmaker are tricky with tri-stringer. I haven't figured it all yet. That's a neat paint trick. Yup. Well, glad I can provide some paint tricks on a weapon I do not play. So I saw, I think, a new replay that I can check from you guys. Or not. Oh yes, I did. Uh, the air spray one. R842. No, 824. Or E D F U F U 
R9ET. L1BB. 11B, actually. Okay. Bunny is playing with the air spray. Any other person wants to give their replays uh, to watch? Because currently we're getting a lot of bunny replays. Alright, this is... Bunny, bunny... Yeah, I mean, no, we, 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 get, we got other replays, but... Yeah. If someone wants to give replays, that's cool. So we got Aerospray, Octobra... Okay, lots of close range. The only, like, slightly longer range that we got here is the roller. I guess the roller can do flick shots, so that counts as more range. I guess the game is, counts as more range. Because otherwise, it, it would have probably not paired you guys with uh, a tri stringer and a Squiffer. Because, uh, whoa, well, that seems like you're getting way out range there. So let's see how that goes. Probably not good. For you guys, anyway. You, you really need to be shocking this game if you want to do anything. In my opinion. Uh, Neon Wyvern says, going to head out now. Thanks, Ultris. I'll keep an eye out for your future streams. Thank you. Also, if you want, you can follow. That would be cool. We're just one away from hitting the, the 50 subscriber goals and getting the VIP badges. So, uh, but thank you for tuning in. That was very nice. Very cool. All of you sticking by. That's cool. So, Aerospray. What is the Aerospray doing? Okay, Fizzy Bomb Spam. Ooh. So, this is probably not a good fight for the... Aero spray, especially if the person has like the high ground, you can't really fight them from the high ground because you don't have the range to hit them on top. So you really want to hit fights that are on level with you and use cover a lot. That's how you do it. Okay, yeah, you have someone behind you. I would probably... Yeah, this is not a really safe position to be in. There are people kind of everywhere around you. I mean, this is some good fighting, so I'm not complaining. What I would have probably done if there were still enemies hanging around this area, like down there and etc. I'd have probably super jump back. Or like, stayed on the ledge up there and just fire with your air spray down on the ground below. It's not going to have a lot of range. It's not going to kill. That's not the point. The point is really just to... Outpaint the enemies in a, in a position where you have the high ground and they cannot hit you back. Because it's really hard with range, right? You want to be as safe as you can to counteract the fact that you don't have range. So you stay up there, you paint, you're basically, nope, you're not going to fight in there. Just go back, go mess around with my teammates uh, farther, basically. Um... Yes, you missed it. Yep. Thank you, by the way, for posting the, pad the code again. Maybe next time I'm not gonna look up to find the code since you put them back. Because that way I, I like I can read the chat in real time instead of struggling with it. So how's the map going? Pretty good. For having for being outranged crazily by the by the long range weapons, you guys are doing pretty good. So where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's down there. Okay, pretty good. You guys need to start moving out though, if you want to get back the middle. Yeah, loud, blah, blah. They're struggling to get back, now is your time to get the middle. Whoop, here it is. It's been going for quite a while, I'm probably gonna head out also, yeah. I'm probably also gonna head out myself. I think this is the last match I'm gonna watch. Pretty good, no kills though. Like, now you need to back off. Especially because they've got range. Okay. Been trying to learn different weapons for situations needed. Mm -hmm. How do you shark on Wahoo? Also, just once again, I hate this fucking stuff. <laughs> so much hate for Wahoo. Well, you know how you shark, actually? Um, do you see that center platform? There are, like, little places you can be on under, right? You can be near the walls on the underside and watch your map to see where everyone is and then whenever you see like people kind of like trying to paint to move into your base 
you can see basically if they're going through the left or through the right. And since you're like close to the wall in the in the little conduit below, you can basically move out back to your base and directly to the place where you need to be to stop that person from coming, right? Because they're going to go through the front. Um, I mean, they're going to go from above, right? And they're not going to expect you to be in the conduit just waiting there to kill them. And also one thing that's cool is like you can, that conduit is pretty safe while people are fighting above. You can basically go near the enemy's base up top here um, near the scoreboard. And basically if you see someone that's kind of like going to their base, you can chase them and go kill them if it's safe enough. And also what you can do, a, a tip that I don't know if a lot of people know about, but the walls of the of the center platform are transparent. So you can actually see through them and see what's happening, what fight is happening on the other side of it. So that's a tip to to keep in mind. Um, whoop, let's continue playing. 18 seconds. Uh, how's the map looking? Not good. Uh, probably wanna go through the right and go behind people. Okay, yeah, there chasing that guy is not necessarily the best idea because you really need to push forward and get back some ink. Yeah. I would still have win by not that much, so it's good. Oh my gosh, because because yeah, because you had some pain in their base. That was very tight. We won by the way, yes. Well that was cool. Well, again, probably because of the paint the lots of paint in the left side of their base. Um, but yes, so that was our last clip for today. We've been going for three hours. That that's crazy. Thank you everybody for tuning in. You you guys are great. You guys you guys are great. Um, cool clips. You guys are good at the game too. You guys played lots of cool weapons. Poggers, you guys are all cool anyways. Um, so I might probably do this every Friday 2 a.m. CEST, which probably means like Thursday for you guys Americans. Um, so every every thur Thursday it's squid cool squid school clip time. VOD review time so if you guys want to see that and also see some more general Splatoon gameplay because I, I stream a lot of Splatoon I also stream some Splatoon 3D modeling right so I make the rig as you've seen probably in the server it's pretty cool um, you guys can follow me on, on Twitch if you're into that and into seeing more Splatoon stuff And uh, but anyways thank you so much everybody uh, cool you guys, you guys are cool thank you um, and, and that's it for the stream today, so, bye. Hold on, I, I, I want to do the cool thing. Yeah, I can, I can do the cool thing. Isn't that cool? I have, I have stream UIs, overlays. Anyways, bye!